Hey guys, um, just going through a little quick thing about, uh, I'd seen a few threads on making your own power supply and I decided to do my own with a spare ATX power supply I had laying around. Um, I believe it's actually a, let's see how many watts it is. It is a 300 watt ATX power supply. Um, most of the time you can check the label on the side there. Anyhow, um, I skipped past the whole thing like where you cut all the wire and harness all that crap off. Um, most of you guys have enough sense to do that, so, um, you know, if you need to, look up the directions, but it's actually really simple. Um, basically with the power supply, you know, take it apart there, make sure you leave it, let it sit for a few minutes or an hour or so, let the caps discharge, um, specifically these big guys right here. Um, anyhow, Basically, all you gotta do with a wiring harness is separate all the colors and group them together. You know, blacks all together, yellow all together, red all together, orange all together, all that stuff. And basically, the only ones that you really need are the black, yellow, red, and the green. And basically, what I did was, since this already had a switch on it, the green wire here that switches the power supply on. All you gotta do is run it straight to a ground wire, one of the black wires. I just soldered it together, heat shrink on it, no big deal. That way when I flip the power supply on, it will uh, come on automatically and I don't have to have a separate switch. Anyhow, um, you cut all the red ones but one. And uh, the red is the 5.5 um, volt line. And basically what you have to do with it, well, what most people suggest to do is to run it on a like I'm running a 10 watt 10 ohm resistor like one of the ceramic they call it sandbar resistors whatever and basically you just run it in to that and that basically creates a load on the 5 volt line and um, it kinda helps push the uh, voltage up on the 12 volt line and basically what I did is I put a crap load of, of uh, thermal compound on it and stuck it to an old CPU heat sink I had. Um, hopefully, I don't think it'll get hot enough to mess with the zip tie, but if it does, I'll have to get some copper wire or something and kind of string it to it, but it works. And I've got it tucked down in here and uh, kind of let it get some air and it shouldn't get too horribly hot. Um, it gets warm to the touch, but that's about it. Um, anyhow, on to the rest of it here. Any of the other wires that you cut, you can see where I kind of doubled them over and just put some heat shrink on them. That's all you got to do, really. Um, now, on some power supplies, you may have to run this brown wire right here. You may have to hook it to one of the orange wires. Um, it's some kind of sense, sensor wire or something, and some power supplies won't even kick on without you know that connected to one of the orange wires. Mine, it does just fine without it, so I just you know sealed them off. No big deal. Um, the rest of the wires that you have out of these bunches here, you can see where I put heat shrink around the tubing, or I put heat shrink tubing around the wires. And uh, basically, I only used about four or five wires for the 12 volt positive and the ground because I don't, it should be more than enough amperage, or should carry more than enough amperage to power a charger. And uh, so I just basically soldered those together, soldered them on the back side of the uh, female banana jacks there. And um, the rest of them, like I said, I sealed up with heat shrink tubing. And that was basically it. It's pretty simple. Um, takes a little bit of time to do. Um, the biggest thing you got to make sure is that you have enough room to put these jacks. Because I started to put them in like here above these heat sinks and then I realized I've got this enormous fan that I actually wanted to keep in there to help keep that resistor cool right there so I left the fan in there and uh, decided to mount those right there and they'll actually kind of lay across right in here and uh, they work really well and stuff so um, with this power supply, it's a 300 watt power supply and I'll you know it varies, I guess, between brands and stuff, but with this particular 300 watt uh, power man power supply, I'm getting basically 12.4 volts 
um, on the 12 volt line unloaded um, or with no load on it. Now that may dip down a little bit when I put a charger on it. Hopefully, I'm hoping it'll settle off right around 12 volts though with a charger on it, which is pretty much pretty much ideal. Um, I don't really need anything above that because um, my particular RC charger or my, I guess my interest in RC, I don't really need anything more than that. Um, I know a lot of guys suggest, oh, if you're going to stay around, whatever, if you're going to do a lot with a hobby, you need it to power supply to put out at least 15 volts. Uh, maybe if you're, I don't even know if it matters. <laughs> you know, uh, 12 volts has always worked, and I mean, you see a ton of these things out there, so you know, use your own discretion on that one or whatever your own preference. But I'm sticking with this. It's cheap. I had this thing laying around, and you know, it works. So, um, anyhow, that's about it, I believe. Um, let me put this thing together right quick here, and and uh, we'll kind of go from there. And I'll show you guys the rest of it here. In just a second, I'll have to tilt my prop my phone up here on the table. There we go. Like I said, that resistor just kind of drops into the side there next to that uh, main grill there. And uh, I'm going to put this thing all the way together, but you'll get a basic gist of how it looks. And stuff. So that's pretty much it. It's, like I said, it's got that enormous fan right there. And, uh, and that works quite well. And I'll actually probably... You'll probably have it sitting on her desk like that or something. Who knows? You know, uh, whatever you prefer. But um, works pretty good. I didn't. A lot of guys you see will run like the five, uh, the five volt line or like five point five, and I think it's three point three volt lines. I didn't really choose to do that. I only need the twelve volt. So, you know, whatever. But some people may need the five volt line. But in my particular application, I didn't. Anyhow. Um, I will post a link to the site that I got the instructions off of. I had browsed through probably a dozen sites and some of them were just incredibly complicated and um, were kind of vague about this whole little project when it's really it's a pretty simple thing to do. Um, you just have to have some common sense and don't work on it, of course, when it's plugged in and uh, stuff. And, Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and plug it in here. You guys can see the fan spin up. But basically, just turn it on. And that's it. That is as loud as it gets, which is pretty awesome. Um, as long as the resistor stays cool. Now, you know, may do an update here after a few months, but uh, it's looking pretty promising so far. Um, just keep your fingers crossed, though. But um, that's pretty much it. And like I said, I'll post a link in the uh, sidebar or, or under the video um, where I got the instructions. And if you guys have any questions, just post a comment. And I uh, guess I'll see you guys on the forum. Peace.